This video is sponsored by Cliff and Pebble. Close your eyes for a moment. Think back to the winter of 2019, grinding coffee with a $29 Hario Ceramic coffee grinder. Wanting to upgrade your coffee game, you search for the best budget coffee grinder. You find two things. A picture of a nice British gentleman with red glasses and the Brazza Encore. The go-to budget filter coffee grinder recommendation for years now, sold at practically every coffee shop, appliance store, and one of the most sold grinders at online outlets. Flash forward to 2023, and Brazza is now releasing their brand new $200 budget espresso focused yet do-it-all grinder, the Encore ESP. But they've got competition now in the form of the fellow Opus, also a $200 budget espresso focused yet do-it-all grinder. Now, both of these grinders were sent to me by Baratza and Fellow for review, however, no money exchanged hands and all thoughts and opinions are my own. At the time of recording, I've had these grinders for about two to three weeks now and have been using it comparatively side by side in that time frame. Espresso grinders have historically been expensive because of the need to grind very consistently at very fine grind sizes with very fine tunability. So do these grinders live up to the task? Are these truly $200 electric grinders capable of grinding for espresso? And more importantly, which one is the right one for you? Now, before I answer that question, let's take a look at what they offer, starting with the build quality. So firstly, both of these grinders are almost entirely plastic, which makes sense at their price points. In fact, the Encore ESP here is almost identical to the original Baratza Encore. From the outside, it's actually hard to tell them apart. And while the Opus looks to have a similar finish to the Ode, it's definitely not. And everything here is plastic, whereas a lot of the Ode is mostly metal. Both of these grinders do come with plastic grounds chambers. The Encore has the original classic one, as well as this new one designed to fit 54mm portafilters with a rubber ring that extends to fit 58mm portafilters. However, the fitment of the ring isn't the best, and shaking the cup on a portafilter can still result in a little mess. The Opus also has a uniquely designed solution in a plastic cup, similar but not quite the same to the Odes, which is metal by the way, and an insert for the cup that also helps dose into a portafilter. For using the grinders, you still have the button on the front of the Encore to activate the grinder, as well as a knob on the side. The adjustment mechanism still seems to be the same as the original Encore by twisting the hopper. The Opus uses the same front button placement as the original Ode, but no longer has a knocker or an auto stop function, instead it has timed functions which can be changed between 30 second increments depending on a specific set of button presses. In terms of volume, the Encore has that classic high pitched whirring sound, albeit it does sound ever so slightly quieter than the original Encore, at least to my memory. And the Opus runs just a little bit quieter but still on that higher pitched end compared to something like the fellow Ode. Overall, for 200 bucks, the builds of both these grinders aren't much to complain about, nor praise. So now let's talk about these grinders' performance. While mainly advertised as an espresso-focused grinder, they both are also still advertised with the capability to grind up to things like French press and cold brew. The Encore uses 40mm conical M2 burrs and grinds at 550 RPM, while the Opus uses C640 burly burrs, which is also a 40mm conical burr set. The Encore uses the same adjustment style that can be found on the original Encore by turning this hopper. There are 20 steps of adjustment here for espresso that adjust in smaller increments compared to the steps at the larger grind sizes, making fine tuning for espresso easier. The Opus on the other hand has an adjustment mechanism very different from the Ode, as it should given it's a conical burr set versus vertically mounted flat burrs. Instead, the Opus also has a hopper turning mechanism to adjust grind size, but for micro adjustments for espresso, you have to remove the hopper to move this little thingamajig, which allows you to get a few more steps for dialing in. On the Encore, grounds are visually very clumpy, so I would definitely advise in doing a little WDT stir with this grinder. I would also use a little spritz of water as it can get chaffing here and there. The Opus on the other hand uses that same anti-static magic from the fellow O Gen 2 to produce a very mess-free grinding situation without the need for much RDT. 
When it comes to retention, the Opus shines with that anti-static bit again, but without the knocker, there is still just a little bit of retention built up over time that you can find if you sort of pick up the grinder and give it a few taps. The Encore does generally have a little worse retention than the Opus by maybe 0.2-ish grams, but neither grinder has had any significant deviations from the dose I put in, at least not to the point of being overly detrimental. That being said, the Encore will require more regular cleaning compared to something like the Opus due to the higher retention of ground coffee. And yes, they do both grind for espresso. I've been grinding at just under a 10 on the Encore and about at a 2 on the Opus. For both the beans, I've been using Onyx Coffee Labs and Monarch Espresso and have been getting pretty good results. The steps here have given me more than enough range for adjustment without too many issues. But how's it taste? Before getting into that, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Cliff & Pebble. If you're in the market for your first or next espresso machine, grinder, or coffee accessory, be sure to check out Cliff & Pebble. The Chicago-based team has a huge selection of machines from some of your favorite brands, including Rocket, Lalit, Eureka, Brazza, and more. They provide excellent pre- and post-purchase service, and you can be rest assured knowing that they'll help you out with all of your coffee brewing endeavors. So once again, thanks to Cliff & Pebble for sponsoring today's video. So back to the taste. The espresso here is good. I certainly wouldn't try to pull some ultra high clarity light roasts, but for things like medium roasts, milky based beverages, these grinders definitely hit the spot. Shots seem to have a touch of astringency and muddiness that are expected of some smaller 40mm conical burr sets, and clarity isn't super high either, but you can certainly taste some fruity notes in your shots. Now generally, I've pulled my shots a touch longer than I would compared to a larger flat burr grinder, and a lot more of those chocolatey flavor notes come through very well with both of these grinders. The shot quality I think is going to be very sufficient for anyone that just wants to sort of dip their toes into the realm of espresso without spending a ton of money on the grinder. Now compared to each other, I found the espresso to be very, very close. The Opus feels like I'm getting just a touch more clarity and acidity compared to the Encore, but honestly I'd be fine with shots pulled from either of these two grinders. One thing to note is that you do get a few more steps of adjustment with the Opus because of the internal micro adjustment, but again, I think if you're trying to tweak your preferences on a super light roast, you're really pushing either of these grinders really beyond what I think they're capable of or really what they're meant for. But what about the other brewing options? For a filter, they're also not too bad at all. It's not going to get you the same level of clarity as, say, a 64mm flat burr set like the fellow Ode, or an 83mm burr set like the DF83, but they're going to be more than capable for the audiences of these grinders. The brews I've been getting for filter have had a richer full-bodied mouthfeel, likely again due to that smaller 40mm conical burr set, and with just enough clarity where I felt like things haven't been too muddy. Compared to each other, my preference is leaning Encore, where I feel things have been just a bit more balanced with a nicer, richer mouthfeel that I personally like to lean towards sometimes. Similar to Espresso, I found that the Opus leans ever so slightly higher clarity and acidity compared to the Encore. But who's it for? The Brata Encore ESP and the Fella Opus are budget grinders. Both are capable of espresso with some limited range, and both will definitely scratch that espresso itch if it's your first time getting into the realm of espresso. Both are also very excellent and capable do-it-all grinders for their price, and if one might be available in your region and not the other, I honestly wouldn't worry about it because they perform pretty similarly. From an aesthetic perspective and general workflow, the Opus can't be beat with the sleek design and modern aesthetic combined with that anti-static magic. Although the fine-tuned grinding adjustment inside the hopper is a little bit weird. But if we're going full performance here, I'd have to give the edge to the Encore, where I think they've retained the crown of being the go-to entry-level grinder recommendation for filter on the original Encore for years, now bringing that same capability to Espresso. However, I personally think it is a little uglier compared to the Opus, runs a little bit louder, and has a little bit of a messier workflow. So there are some trade-offs. At 200 bucks, these grinders are for those new to espresso, and maybe pairing this with a great budget machine like a Breville Bambino or a manual flare lever. I think both Barazza and Fellow have hit it out of the park with these grinders, especially at just 200 bucks and I'm personally happy to see more budget machines with great performance enter the market. So anyway, those are going to be my thoughts on the new Brazza Encore ESP and the fellow Opus. I'll leave links to both these grinders below in case you want to check them out. So thanks again for watching, be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.